What did we learn about Brexit over the last couple of weeks? I don't think we learned very much at all. I think we learned a great deal about the political uh, excitement that Brexit has induced. And I think one of the most striking contrasts is that Brexit has had rather little impact on the economy and may in the long run have rather little impact, whereas politically it's been enormously important. Prime Minister resigned, enormous differences of view within and between political parties, people speculating on whether this could lead to a realignment of British politics. Who knows? But the political excitement has been enormous, the economic excitement much less so. Will you vote today in the House of Lords? Well, I shall consider, I shall listen to what is said and then decide whether or not to vote. What role does the House of Lords now have? It seems that they, they've kind of, you know, been awakened from a slumber. Well, I, I, I wouldn't put it that way, and I think the House of Lords needs to be pretty careful about this. There, there was a referendum. Mm -hmm. The decision was made very clear by both sides that it will be for the people to decide in the referendum. That decision has been reached, and now it's the role of Parliament to implement that. Now, there is no doubt that over the next two years or so, there will be a lot of discussions, and there will be probably some set of arrangements brought before the House of Commons for a vote. But I think it would be quite wrong for the House of Lords at this stage to try to lay down conditions as to what should be the process which is followed at the end of that period. And this, Lord King, because it's not their role or because it would put the Prime Minister Theresa May in well, a I think difficult it, position? I, no, I think it's because it would contravene the express wish of the House of Commons and that of the referendum. And I put those two together and I think that would be most unfortunate. Uh, Lord King, good morning. I want to quote the central banker Charles Dickens. This is from The End of Alchemy, where Lord King uh, goes back to the 19th century. A tale of two cities, or maybe it's a tale of a united kingdom. Of course, the end of A Tale of Two Cities. It is a far, far better thing I do, etc., etc. What is your to-do list for Prime Minister May right now before she heads to the proverbial guillotine? I don't think she's likely to head to the guillotine, but I do think it's important that the United Kingdom now actually is proactive in setting out what the government's plan for immigration policy will be. This is not something that should be negotiated with Europe. It's for the United Kingdom to decide. And I would hope that sooner rather than later now, it's nine months on from the referendum, that we actually learn what the government's plan for an immigration policy will be. And I think that the second thing is that it would make sense at this juncture to say that we accept that we cannot have our cake and eat it by being both in and out of the European Union at the same time, that we are going to leave, and therefore it makes sense not only to leave the single market but also the customs union. And I think that <coughs> announcing that at this stage would remove the necessity for a large number of negotiations mm -hmm. about which a lot of people are pontificating at present. You mentioned the eating of cake, and I believe that's Marie Antoinette, if my European history uh, is correct. Do you have a confidence, sir, that we will see a lack of inequality within the United Kingdom society if we get a constructive Brexit? Will we see a better United Kingdom in terms of fairness for all citizens? Well, my own view is that Brexit is unlikely to make a major difference to the economic outcome in the United Kingdom. This is what is so disappointing about the political class focusing entirely on this one issue. The British economy faces a number of very important challenges, of which I would guess the most significant is the need to rebalance our economy, to reduce what is a very large external current account deficit, and that means that consumption will have to grow much more slowly and investment and exports much more quickly. That won't be very pleasant for people in the United Kingdom, but it's an inevitable consequence of where we are today, and it has nothing to do with Brexit. So my own judgment is that the challenges we face are nothing to do with Brexit, and that Brexit in the long run, in any event, mm -hmm. is not likely to make an enormous difference. Uh, you're right to point to the need to focus on the question and challenge of inequality, because that is something which is very important at present. Lord King, do you believe that the government is putting enough emphasis on trying to find a transitional deal for financial services or trying to protect the car manufacturing industry, which are the ones that I guess in a messy negotiation with the EU have the most to lose? Well, I'm not a great fan of any transitional arrangements or deals. I think we should make very clear what our position is mm -hmm. and then very quietly and calmly talk to our European partners. We don't need to negotiate very much, actually. It's they, who actually, who need to negotiate with us because they have a much bigger trade surplus with us. Mm -hmm. We have a large trade deficit with the rest of the European Union. 
And I don't think in financial services that it would be sensible for the government to sacrifice the future of the British economy and the decision to leave the European Union on the altar of high finance. Uh, I think actually it will make rather little difference to the major financial institutions. Some individuals will move undoubtedly to Europe mm -hmm. to deal with euro clearing and so on. But actually many right. will not. Well, and I think, the, I, I think the future of the City of London is secure because of its role in the world okay. as a whole.